What it do, YouTube, man? It is your boy, Solid, back with another Solid Reaction, man. And today, we got NBA legends on why Kevin McHale was so unguardable. Now, Kevin McHale was probably one of the most dominant big men in his era, bro. He was just shifty. He was Elijah Wan before Elijah Wan. He was what Larry Bird needed. He was just that part that was missing from that cog to keep that cog running. And when Kevin McHale took over and became a starter, everything just went up. I'm not saying it wasn't up before he got there, but you could just tell the difference in the caliber of play between before he got there and after he got there. So we're going to go ahead and check this video out, man. I hope this is your first time seeing me on your screen, because if it is, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe to this channel and turn your notifications on. And make sure y'all leave me a comment and let me know that y'all are part of the family now. And I'll make sure to show some mad love on the next couple of videos, man. But let's go ahead and get into this one and see what's going on. Celtics are going to stay with what got him here. Oh. Bro, I hate intros. I'm sorry. I just hate intros. It's me. Sorry. Hey, what's good, everyone? Welcome back to the Basketball Time Machine. My name is Sean David. Thanks for tuning in. Let's talk some old school NBA basketball. Okay. In today's episode, I want to take a look at NBA legends talking about how good Kevin McHale was. The great Boston Celtics player that unfortunately could have been even better, but because he was a sixth man, I think he didn't get the credit that he deserves. But that's what we're going to take a look at in this video. Let's get right into it. How you? How the fuck you got two intros, bro? I'm sorry. That is overkill. Now the first two players' opinion that we're gonna take a look at are from Dr. J and Bill Walton. Bill Walton obviously played with Kevin McHale, and Dr. Yeah. J had his rivalries with Kevin. Let's have a look. This guy's mind, this his creative imagination, his skill set, his oh, footwork, his that's touch, what I'm talking his shooting, about. and then his trash talking. It was just absolutely incredible. He it was a tremendous opponent to have too with those big square shoulders and you know is, is as awkward as he might have seemed sometimes on the court he always knew where he was going and he knew what he was doing and he was probably the most feared guy uh in boston by the 76ers you know we played and we played them you know i knew if i if i beat bird or maxwell mikhail was going to beat him Kevin wasn't afraid to, to take a shot at you. You know, he was a, a critical piece to the puzzle. And, and there were many nights when he was the MVP in Boston. So one night we're, we're playing against the Celtics and McHale really has it going. And and uh, he's he's torching, you know, our power forwards, you know, Kent Benson, you know, Earl Curitan. And, and finally, you know, he started saying he's got these guys in the torture chamber. Mm. So every time they would enter the basketball into him, he would sob, he would holler chamber like you know he got him <laughs> in the torture chamber, and you know it's too late. So I was coming back to double team, and he was looking down at me shooting like you, you, you're too late. I there's nothing you can do about this. Now the next player's opinion hey. that we're going to take a look at is from a former teammate and obviously one of the greatest players of all time, Larry, Larry Bird. Bird. Yes, Let's sir. Take a look what he has to say. Talk about lies, one and all the other great ones. They're great, but. Uh, uh, Kevin is, was as good as, as anybody I've ever seen. Uh, he probably gave up more than anybody. Um, he didn't demand it. He, he liked his shots. He's nice oh, on his feet. And that's what made Kevin McHale so cold. Is he's so he's so nice on his feet, man. He just look he like like Dr. J said. He looks awkward, but he actually knows what he's doing. He's so nice on his feet. Like yeah, he has some of the best. When you play in a really oh, good ooh. team, everybody sacrifices for each other because. But it's not a sacrifice. It's, it's just that if, if Robert had it going, which he did many nights, we, he just got the ball. Exactly. If, if Robert and Larry had it going, I just knew I wasn't going to get as many shots. No big deal. You know, the next night might be my night. We got ours. And, and you know, our goal was to have one more point than the other. When I got there, Kevin was like the sixth man. So he was coming off the bench. Every once in a while he was a star. But he had a routine. Shoot around, he would sit on the sideline. And Larry was screaming, like, Kevin, get your butt up and have a shoot around. And he would tell everybody, hey, you want it now at 10 o'clock or do you want it at 7 o'clock? You tell me which one you want. I only give it to you once a day. It's so okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I, I can't say that. Kevin, like, nah, bro. Uh uh. Look, if I shoot now and I make all my shots, we ain't going to have none tonight. You just let me chill. And then tonight, I'll give y'all the whole 30 I got in my clip. You feel what I'm saying? I, I, I'm a rookie. You know, I'm like, I can't say that. You know? Kevin McHale. Um, 
taught me more about basketball, I would say, than, than any big man coach, the way he would move his body. Yes. I mean, you ever see, it looks like his body is halfway leaned over and halfway down, but his head is up here. It's just a weird look. And how he would stand, catch you, make you go up, lean under you, get under you, make you foul. You, know, you just had to hate ball, him. You were at his mercy. So, the best. Kevin McHale. The best post moves in all of basketball, the best footwork in all of basketball. That's what I'm this saying. Storied history of tremendous rivalry in professional basketball takes on a new chapter. The Philadelphia 76ers versus the Boston Celtics. He can get out there and he have his <laughs> wingspan. I might as well just take a jump shot. He's all the way down here. Julius blocked by McHale. When you're talking about signature moves, Kevin McHale, uh, and the dream shake, Hakeem Olajuwon. That's I just said that. Did I not just say that? That was that was Kareem before Kareem. That was a lot. I mean, Olajuwon before Olajuwon. I think they're the two best. Mm -hmm. They're the two. And I played many years against both of those guys. And Kevin McHale, they got to, it got to the point where they were calling him a man of a thousand moves. Could not guard him one on one on the box. Yeah. Because he had such great footwork, and he did a great job of feeling the contact. And once he felt you, you were done. If the double team didn't come right away. Forget about it. He had too much stuff on the box. Mm -hmm. Honestly, my bag personal too big. nemesis is Kevin McHale because he was such. He's the best player I ever played against. You could not stop him. I've always said that you could not stop that guy. It was. And on the other end, I had to use every ounce of energy I did to score on him. That guy. When I look. When I looked at because we all look at the schedule. We're like, okay, I can have some fun that night. Uh-oh, uh-oh, better get a good night's sleep that night. I mean, we all say the same thing uh, about different guys, but Kevin McHale is the best player I played against because he was unstoppable offensively and he gave me nightmares on defense. One of the great, great power forwards that I've ever played in the NBA. Kevin, he was a gamer. He was an ultimate gamer. You throw the ball to him, you might not get it back because he, he can score on anybody. He won't go back to you, ladies. It's called a black hole for, the, for a reason. But he was one of the best scorers in the post with all the moves. Mm. There are Dawkins, his name is Dunks. But Kevin McHale's name is Moose. You know, he, had, he had one called Slippery Hill. He had one called Shake and Jake. It's like, it, it, he had so many names for, for moves. And they'll just score anytime they want because it's tenacity. I give Both him KG that. and Kevin, because two guys who were great in the low post. And obviously, and one was a mentor to the other, Mikhail being to Garnett. Right. You know, how prevalent will the low post game be in the next five years? We, we, we see all the stretch God forwards dang. and we talk about it all the time, but here are two guys that were sitting down there. You know, obviously, Diesel is one of them as well, but we're talking about guys who the skill was magnificent over the power. So what mm. do you two guys think? That's going to happen in the next five years. When you think about the post it being a big man, pounding physical presence, and then all of a sudden around the 80s, you start to see, um, you know, the Kevin McHale's, the Jack Sigmas, the Charles Barkley's, Adrian Dantley's, guys that took the post and took a, a finesse kind of approach to it. But there's one name that's too often left off the list. The name of a guy who routinely gave some of the greatest to ever lay some up. Problems. The business. <laughs> I, I have no idea why, because he, he wasn't very athletic, but for some reason, he knew all the little tricks, and he drove me crazy when I played <laughs> against him. Like he, like, he kicked my butt more probably than any player that I played against. As I was growing up, when we was playing against the Celtics, the Celtics would come in, and, you know, they knew they was going to beat us no matter how we start the game. In Chicago, the Celts against the Bulls. Kevin McHale, look at this great pass to Robert mm. Parrish. McHale himself had 31 points on the night. He said he was so sure that they were going to beat the Bulls. He said he didn't even bring a change of clothes. They just God knew damn. We were fall. Oh, my God. The disrespect, bro. I'm not, I didn't bring no clothes to change into, man. The fuck you mean, boy? <laughs> I'm not, I didn't bring no clothes. We're going to whoop y'all. We're going to go home. <laughs> Two easy points. We done out. Peace. You see what I'm saying? Like, that's how they felt about it. Boy, I'd be mad. Oh, and they wouldn't come back and beat us. You know, Kevin McHale would, you know, would talk more trash than anybody you've ever seen, and Bird as well. But they knew they were going to win. As we go to break, mm -hmm. a little trash talking. What did you used to tell people in Game 7 
or in closeout no. games when they were in uh, oh, I don't Boston. Even to hear. I used to tell them all the time. I said, look at now, when we get done tonight, just shut off the lights because, you know what, this game's over. I said, yeah. when the closeout game, I used to always tell Johnny Lucas, I said, John, you know where the lights are in this place first time? He said, what for? I said, I said, because, you know, I said, we're getting ready to shut the lights off on this place. So you tell them before the game. I got one of those, right? Yeah. Closeout <laughs> game. I'm, I'm going up. It's about maybe five seconds to go in the game. I go up to shoot. Miguel goes, all right. That is your last shot of the season. <laughs> I hope you oh make my. it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you better hit this. Game already over. This is the last shot of the season for you. Game over with. I don't know why you're shooting it, but go ahead and shoot it. You better make it because it's the last one you're going to get. <laughs> oh he my averaged God. 26 points a game. I got to hear Mom, that one more that time. That is your last shot of the season. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you make it. <laughs> <laughs> he averaged 26 points a game while shooting 60% from the floor and 80% from the line. He you know how many NBA players have averaged 20 or more points, shot 60% uh, from Kevin the floor McKill with the up and, and 80% under. from the strike in the same season? One, Kevin McHale. So how good was Kevin McHale, oh, in my opinion? Well, as I said in the beginning of the video, I think that if he wasn't a sixth man for a period of his time, I think he would have gotten a lot more appreciation because this guy was insane. And I'm not only talking about his great post game, his basketball IQ, this guy was a sensational basketball player and definitely belonged in the top 50, rightfully so. So Kevin McHale, you are great in my books. All right, man, that is the end of this video, man. Y'all know how I feel about the Celtics, man, especially that Larry Bird's team. It was a very great team, man. I don't think anybody on that team wasn't dominant. Uh, we perish being Mikael, being Larry, being any of the, the role players on that team. That team was just stacked perfectly the way it needed to be stacked. But Kevin McHale, I would always, like, when after I watched Elijah Wan, I said, well, this is just Kevin McHale all over again. Because that's exactly the feel I got from Elijah Wan was this just Kevin McHale all over again. And... Kevin McHale is one of those guys that you just can't try to guard them one way. You can't just think this is it because he's got a bag full of tricks and a trick full of bags. You get what I'm saying? Like, even when you think you figured it out, like, oh, he's going to go left. He's done this move before. Nope, he might go right. He might go left. He might fall back. He might do something. So you always got to stay on your toes with Kevin McHale. But Kevin McHale is one of the greatest, if not the greatest, power forward of all time. I think Kevin McHale does get, like he said, a lot of, he doesn't get the 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 love he deserved because he was a six man at one point in his career. He did spend some time as a six man. So therefore, he doesn't get the love. But for me personally, Kevin McHale is very great. I would put him in my top 40. I put him in my top 40 at least, maybe my top 30. It's iffy right there. But, man, that's just something that, you know, I just feel, man. But if you guys did enjoy this video, man, make sure I hit that like button. Subscribe to this channel and turn your notifications on so you can never miss another solid reaction, man. I'm going to get out of here. Peace.